I have a confession to make. But first, two questions. Raise your hand if you enjoy driving cars. Oh, that's good. Also, raise your hand if you dislike driving cars in traffic jams, having to look for parking space. Yes, that's what I thought. So looking at your answer, I feel like we have the same love-hate relationship with cars. And that's where my confession comes, and I, I'm sure you all have the same confession to make, especially in this country. We're addicted to cars. And of course, for me as a car designer, I understand the allure of cars. You know, I've been working for a car company where driving pleasure is at its core. And so driving my convertible, the roof down, windy road, sunny like today, it's fantastic. On the other hand, driving in a traffic jam, having to look for a parking space in Frankfurt in the evening, not so much fun. Also, like this morning on the autobahn, on the autobahn on the way to Frankfurt, not on the way to Antwerp, I was driving fast as I usually do, and it's it's not about the the the, the, the sensation of speed because with modern cars you don't really feel it anymore. But it's just that it, it feels like four hours wasted. It's like a waste of time. You can't do anything else but driving a car. And so it feels like the car as we know it today is maybe not the answer to every wish of personal mobility. Not now and definitely not in the far future. Now, you might be thinking, why is he telling us this after so many years in the car industry? Well, there was a a trigger. Well, basically, there was a holiday last April in Japan. I combined business with pleasure. And the pleasure part was discovering Japan, the lesser known areas with a rental car. And I didn't want any old car. I insisted on a K car. Now, in Europe, you probably don't know what a K car is. In Japan, it's super popular. More than 40% of the cars sold are K cars. And they're popular because they're, they're tiny, they're economical, they can be really practical, sometimes they look really cool. And on the screen you can see, I think it's going to be the only slide for today, but I really wanted to show the K-car that I rented. Unfortunately, not as cool as I thought it was going to be, but it was, it was fun anyway. And on top of that, my... Normally, nice colleagues in Japan, in Hiroshima, where the headquarters is, they, they were mocking me and they said, yo, this is, this is not a real car. But of course it is. And I think especially for the Japanese environment and for the Japanese mentality, it's the perfect car. The Japanese drive slow. They're super relaxed on the road. And so as a foreigner, to drive in Japan is, is not an issue at all. And also I said... It's practical. I've seen them use their car as a, an extra room away from their tiny apartments where there might not be enough privacy. I've seen them sitting at the side of the road watching a movie with a friend. So choosing that vehicle for my trip was, made a real difference. It really made me slow down. I wasn't as stressed as I was this morning on the autobahn. You know, I arrived at my destinations really relaxed. And I thought, okay, it's, it's a holiday situation. Of course, you're a bit more relaxed and slowing down. But I was thinking, how can I take this situation in Japan to my everyday life in Frankfurt? And that's what I want to do with you today. I want you to think with me about scenarios of future individual mobility in a positive way. Not, not think about speed, but think about slowing down and experiences. So let's go back to Japan and my trip with that K car. Imagine I wasn't driving the car, the car was driving itself. I would have had a lot more time to look around, make nice pictures with my wife, maybe around a little table, decide on the next cool stop for coffee. It would have changed that experience. It would have been much richer. I would have been connected to the landscape and the culture and the people much more. And that's exactly the, what I wanted from that holiday. And it's a bit the opposite of what cars do today. They kind of 
cocoons that disconnect you from the outside world physically and visually. And yes, there's been a lot of talk about aut autonomous driving, and some people think it's already there. I think we still have a long way to go. Yes, we have cars with systems that keep you in between the lines. We have systems that recognize other cars and brake when they have to. So these are systems that make driving more pleasant and more safe. But it's still far, far away. Nevertheless, I think that shouldn't stop us of brainstorming about scenarios that could uh, happen with this idea. A scenario being, it's Monday morning, I know I have a busy week ahead, I know traffic is a dog, I, I don't feel like driving, so I order a self-driving service. And maybe you noticed I'm in love with Japan, I want to learn more Japanese. So on top of that service, the driving service, I also order the next Japanese lesson. So the vehicle arrives, the doors open, I get welcomed by sound, by all my personal settings when it comes to seating or light. Of course, the system knows that I'm going to do my next Japanese lesson, so I have a learning environment with a screen and hopefully with a digital pad so I can learn the next kanji. And so, of course, I will be transported comfortably from home to the design studio. And to be honest, I don't really care anymore how long it takes because I'm not wasting my time, I'm learning Japanese. And if I would be clever enough, I would be able to write another kanji at the end. Or maybe I could tell my colleagues a short Japanese joke. So what would that mean for vehicle design? And what would that mean to me as a car designer? First of all, the vehicle. Car design has been dictated for 100 years through the power tray. Basically, we always had the engine in the front and two seat rows behind it. Future vehicles will be influenced by experiences. Of course, there will be technology, but they will, be, they will have a supporting function. We'll have electrification, we'll have autonomous driving, probably AI is in there somewhere as well. So if you would ask me to design today the interior of this future vehicle, I would not be drawing a dashboard with a steering wheel anymore, which is today really the focus. We wouldn't even have maybe a dedicated front and rear in the vehicle. I would want to have seats that move around, a screen that is there for learning or for entertainment. I would want to have bigger windows again so we can connect to the outside world again. And also, as if we take the slowing down really serious, it's actually easier for car manufacturers because we wouldn't have to test our vehicles at the crazy speeds that we test them at the moment. And so for me as a car designer, I have to open my mind. I have to widen my scope. I have to start talking to people like you with different backgrounds from different industries and even from the political spheres because the answer to individual mobility in the future will not just be the car. The answer will be much bigger. So big that I, as a car designer, I can't answer it myself. I, I need you. And therefore, I invite you to that conversation, a positive conversation about the future of mobility. What kind of experience do we want? Let's forget about speed. Let's think about slowing down. And so, therefore, I have one last question for you today. Who wants to start this conversation with me, starting tonight? Oh, that's more than enough. <laughs> Let this be the start of our car rehab.